Yo, yo, what's good? It's Timmy Lee Glean. I'm coming at you with another video on this healing series. And um, I feel like something that's very important that we need to talk about. It's not easy to grow up and not have enough or not have anything. And then you finally come into enough or you finally come into something and now you're managing it terribly or you're not a good steward with it. And you're not doing well with it. And this is because many of us don't realize and i have revelation on this which is why i wanted to add this to the um to the healing series because i believe there are so many issues that come from not having enough from not having enough finances money <laughs> for not having enough resources for not having enough opportunity for not having enough man there's there's, there's stuff that comes with that you know, so when you're growing up in an environment where you're poor and also you don't have any opportunity around you to thrive in anything, many of the schools, especially public schools, man, they don't they don't care to highlight your gifts or anything like that. I think of myself, public buffalo, public buff, uh, pub, public buffalo, buffalo public schools. I've attended buffalo public schools as a high honor roll student. As a high honor roll student and an extreme creative, my guidance counsel counselors knew nothing about me. We didn't have a good relationship. And then my parents as well, they weren't 100% involved in my life in school because there was so much life stuff going on, who could focus? Usually in a normal setting, you know, it's, it's two parents they work together to raise up the children and if there's anything that the children has to do if one parent can't go the other parent has to go but when you grow up in a in a space where you have a two-parent household but you have eight individuals in the house and both of them don't or both of them together needs to work full time in order to make enough to take care of everything and then to go from that, because we own, we own house, we were homeowners. And then from the home ownership, we went straight to, <laughs> straight to poverty, like straight to it. But yeah, there were moments we had food stamps and welfare. And my mom married my father, you know, and my dad worked towards things to make sure that we didn't have to worry about that. But once he went blind, he couldn't work anymore. And then my mom had to pick up double the slack for seven other people in the house by herself. Now, my father was getting SSI and stuff like that, but that ain't nearly, nearly as much as working a 40 hour work shift at what they were making at that time. Um, and my father just being blind, it, it not only did it lead to troubles financially and even a lot of you know my father didn't make the best decisions and rest his soul i love him very much i love him dearly but we have to be honest open and accountable and he's not here to be accountable um and i'm not here to point fingers or or to like even speak down on my father or anything he was a great man he's a great man he taught me so many things but money was one thing that i did not learn from him um i didn't learn about money at all um until I started to look into it myself. You know, everybody around me wasn't good with money. Even those that had money, there's a lot of people that had money. Most of the people that had money around me had money because of illegal stuff. <laughs> so they were in the streets, they're selling drugs or doing this or that, you know, and all the honest people were the people that were just barely getting by, not making it. Growing up, I ain't know no entrepreneurs. I ain't know nobody that said, you know, I'm starting a business. And anybody I knew that started a business, the business shut down within a month or two. <laughs> like, not to, not to laugh at that, but man. You know, so I look at, you know, just those younger years. And I, I look at those years where I had no foundation of learning about a checking account, a savings account, an annuity, a pension, a 401k, the stock market. Man, if I'd invested in Bitcoin back when it was a couple dollars, <laughs> I wanna put y'all onto something right now. Um, 
Shiba, Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu, uh, Shiba is a dog, a specific dog. But there is a Bitcoin called Shiba Inu. And this stuff is very cheap right now. Invest in it. Invest in it. Even if you just throw 200 on it and just leave it. I want to tell you that. I just, I just had to share that with you. I was moved to share that with you. Shiba Inu. If you know about it already, and you know about it. And if you don't know about it, get to know what it is. Don't invest too much into something like that if you don't know it. I don't know too much about stock and things like that or uh, what other joints they got. They got index funds, you know, a group of stocks together that you can invest in. There's, there's so many different things. These are things that I literally just learned when I started walking with the most high. I didn't learn about money until I started walking with the most high. When I wasn't walking with the most high, I realized, like even growing up, going through those college years, like I remember, um, I was working, I had a job, I was doing my music, I went to college for like two months, <laughs> you know, I dropped out, but well, make sure I got that check though. <laughs> Don't go to college for a check, go to college because you, you want to, but, you know, but I remember my checks, like, I'm looking back at it now, like, man, if I'd have just invested all that money that I spent on all the alcohol that I bought on my businesses sooner and started investing in the businesses sooner, I think of all the alcohol and all the all the weed that I smoked and all that, man, that, that was a waste of money. It burnt away and it has nothing, like, it has zero value. All that, all the thousands, and I don't mean like thousands, like 2,000. I mean thousands on thousands. I mean, I know that I spent over 10,000 easily. And I can't, I can't even, I, I'm even scared to even think about the number that I spent on Bud, but I'm saying the, the amount that I spent on Bud, I could probably pay the rest of my car off right now. I could pay my car off with what I bought. I could put a down payment on a house. <laughs> I could put a down payment on a house from all the Bud and, and oh, let's include, if, if we include the alcohol, man, I could have bought a house in cash <laughs> with all that. Now, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying that so you can just think about where your money is going because I know me as an adult finally having money I'm like man I'm about to go shopping I'm about to buy these fly clothes I'm about to buy these sneakers I'm about to buy this I'm about to buy that and yes you do see me with with these, these chains on right now and you see me with nice watches and nice stuff now and yeah y'all has blessed me and that stuff ain't getting in the way of paying my bills and it ain't getting in the way this stuff ain't getting in the way of me doing what I need to do for my family and for my loved ones and to provide in my household and, and that's the thing man if, 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 if you are good buy what you feel is in your heart <laughs> and not out of vanity but just you know if you're gonna do something just do it you know but I looked at all the stuff that I've done all the stupid decisions that I made and nothing to show for it and now I'm sitting here at 33 years old thinking like man if I'd have started this at, at 21 when I first started working I first started working at 20 even if I started at 21 I've been working all throughout my 20s uh, besides like a little period of time where I wasn't working to take care of my children um, and another time I had a transitional period where I was waiting on a better opportunity which y'all has blessed me with but um yeah man we got to be better with our money and i feel like the younger you are and you know this the better there's too many of us in our community specifically that don't know nothing about money but spending it because we taught by the rappers the rappers teach you to spend your money don't listen to these rappers these rappers not stupid either these rappers are smart these rappers are saving their money these rappers are investing in this stuff these rappers are no they're using you to gain money they're rapping about the stuff that influences you to spend the money. They're rapping about the stuff that influences you to kill each other. They're rapping about the stuff that influences you that influence you to be a terrible person. That's why God wants to bring up people in the light, rather kingdom businesses, kingdom music, kingdom content creation, kingdom movies, <laughs> kingdom fashion. And I believe that it can be lucrative if you have the right heart. You know, so for people that are in the faith, Man, if you are walking with the most high, you have to give your financial everything up to the most high. When you look at your statements, 
and you see the packs of cigarettes that you bought or you see or me personally all the black and milds that i bought i bought so many black and milds <laughs> it don't make no sense so much black and milds like black and milds like that is sad you know the the thousands that i spent on black and milds alone if we if we start to add up all the frivolous spending of things that kill you Oh my goodness, you you won't realize that you are paying money to kill yourself and then you still got to pay money to live and you got to pay money to die. Like you literally got paid to die. <laughs> so man. <laughs> but when you grow up poor, man, you don't you don't you don't think outside the box financially. You don't you don't think about certain things. You know, like putting your children on your credit. So by the time your children are old enough to do stuff legally, they already have a pristine credit score. You know, that these are things that, that we drop the ball on and, and, and that we need to stop, man. We need to stop, man. Like I said, these are issues that I dealt with as a grown up because I didn't learn from my parents. This ain't even no childhood trauma stuff. This is just me not learning. And when you're not learning and not educated in something, you're not gonna be able to do well in it. This is why if you, I wanna look up the specific, the, the, the specific statistic on this but in our community in our community when I say our community I mean melanated people the Israelites when I look at our community in America we spend trillions on trillions on trillions of dollars in they bit like so it these trillions of dollars aren't even going towards our businesses and to forward and better our people but these are going towards everybody else and then at the end of the day, we have nothing to show for it. I want to double back on something because buying sneakers is a business. So I want to double back on that because people buy J's for fashion. And, and if you rock with it, you rock with it. You know what I'm saying? I bought some J's. I got some, I got sneakers. I got nice stuff. You know, but some people actually use it and resell it. They buy stuff and resell it. They buy it, fix it up and resell it. That's genius, you know, but... When I'm speaking on, you know, our people that, once again, that, okay, we need to be healed. No, you need healing. I understand you need to heal from your financial issues because I guarantee you that most of the issues in your life is because of the lack of finances that you have. What people are willing to do, it's like, it's like the less money you have, the, the less morals you have. And not to say it like that, because some people have gained money because of that very thing. People will do things to get money that are against them, are against their morals and especially against the most high. You have done things in your life that have messed you up. It's messed you up and it's messed you up because you didn't have money and you needed to do something to get money that you felt and you did something unethical. You did something that is just not good. Um, people do illegal things and those lead to certain things like prison. Like if, if, you, if you do certain things, you're going to go to prison for those things. There's effects that happen in prison. No real thing. People get molested in prison. So that's one thing. You think you're coming out? You think you're coming out regular after that? Even people that experience just traumatic experiences with, you, you know, it, things happen in jail. What I'm saying is the things happen in jail to a person is a result of him actually going to jail. He went to jail because of the decisions he made. He made the certain decisions because of the position in life that he's in. And the position of life that he's in and what's around him, it doesn't show him anything positive. It doesn't show him that there's another way even if you live in this environment. I'm a walking testimony of the only person when I look around, everybody is in the streets, everybody's selling drugs, everybody's fighting or killing or or they enter they into some they enter some stuff. Stuff happening in the hood every day. And I ain't in none of that. I had nothing to do with anything. I wasn't hanging out with nobody. I wasn't in no gangs. I wasn't running around with the wrong crowd. And I wasn't doing this. I wasn't doing that. But I was poor. So there's people that's been poor and they sold drugs because they were poor to get the things that they wanted to impress people because that's all it basically is for when we young i was poor 
So there's a deeper struggle when you're that person. When you're the person that is educated, that likes to read, that has good grades, that thinks at a higher level, but you are poor and you have certain stuff and you live in the hood, you gonna get treated, you gonna get treated a different way. I've always got treated like I'm not even from the hood. I always got treated like but this kind of thing happens because it's the poor mindset. It's a poor mindset that when you're in the hood and you speak with a certain vernacular, when you have a certain cadence, when you have a certain, what, what's, what's another word that I'm trying to use? When you have a certain level or, or, or a higher level of lexicon, when you have a high extreme lexicon, there's people that has an extreme lexicon Oh, you think you smarter than us. You think you better than us. You think you this. Oh, he's smart. He this. You know, and, and people look down on you for wanting to excel or go past the expectations of what's expected from anybody that, that's growing up in this environment. I'm a project baby. When I was born, we lived in the projects. I'm a project baby. You know the statistics for a project, baby? <laughs> you know, but, so this is something that we need to heal from, you know? Even if you weren't doing anything. But, like I said, there's people that were different, that are poor, were different. If you're poor and different, <laughs> that, is, that is the recipe for not only misunderstanding, but being picked on and bullied, if you're a certain type of person. Now, I think y'all, because I really had goons all around me and underlyingly I jive was a goon too inside like <laughs> and not to say it like that like but nobody ever messed with me like I didn't really get bullied like people touching me fight or beat me up I got bullied with words but honestly I'd rather take a punch to the face than somebody to call me something like at, at that point I'd rather take a punch to the face than this, this somebody to, to say something terrible about me or you know all in all you gotta be you gotta be accountable for your decisions in life so whatever you've done in your life that led you to where you are today just in general your life you gotta be accountable for it so when you complain about not having enough money when you complain that this job ain't this, this job ain't that, when you complain about these things, just know that you are in control. If you don't like your job, get a new job. Plain and simple. If you don't like the wages, find something with a different wage and get a new job. If you can't find that, then do something extra. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not here to be a financial advisor, so I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to plant a seed so that people that make bad financial decisions, like myself, we need healing. Cre that, why do you think they call it credit repair? <laughs> why do you think you need credit repair? Because something needs to be fixed. There's an issue, there's something broken. And sometimes there's a broken mindset. That's where being broke comes from. Broke is, I believe, is a mindset. When you don't have enough funds, I don't believe that. People use the word broke, and you can say that's broke. But I believe broke is a mindset. You can be rich with nothing in your pockets. But when you have ideas, when you have goals, <laughs> when they're clear, and when you have a plan to execute them, and you're actually striving and working towards those goals and those things, you are far from poor. You are rich. You are rich because you see what it takes to be rich and you take action you know so when you start to overcome those hurdles man look at your bank statement think about the number one thing that you spend the most money on look at your bank statements honestly and just count up count up the past month then go back and count the last month after that and then count the month after uh, I mean not after that the month before that and the month before that now, if you really want to get deep, and if you really want to pierce your heart, go through the last 12 months, the past year, on the biggest thing that you spent, not something that is an investment or something that is of use or a bill or anything. I mean, something that you know, you don't need, you just get it. Say for instance, Arizonas. I remember I would spend, um, I would buy two Arizonas a day. 
the Arizonas at that time were $1, so I would spend $1 in a day, $1 in a night. I would get two Arizonas a day, six days a week. <laughs> no, seven. I'll just say seven. Uh, seven days a week, $14. That's $14 a week. Um, I think, yeah, so seven, eight, seven, boom, boom, yep. So seven days a week, boom, times two from $14. Uh, well, 14 times 4 is, uh, what is it, 56? So that's $56 a month spent on Arizonas. You could have saved $56 on them Arizonas by drinking water. Or you could spend $10 on a water bottle and refill your water bottle. Bam. So now you saved yourself, what? If it's a $10 water bottle, bam. Now you got 46 extra dollars. And months after that, 56 extra dollars if you either stop or even slow down and say you spend 20 a month on Arizonas. Or say for instance, like I said before, if you buy it in bulk, you save money. So if you buy a big old giant case of Arizonas, if you really love Arizonas that much, buy it. Buy it in bulk. That will save you money over time. It just takes self-discipline into not drinking all those Arizonas at once. Because I know how it is. Like, I'm an Arizona drinker. I was an Arizona drinker. I'm not anymore. I drink water predominantly. And I drink coffee. Coffee is the number one thing, by the way. Oh, my goodness. You know, the hundreds. I spent about a hundred a week on Tim Hortons. I spent like three, four hundred a month on Tim Hortons alone. I remember when I look back at my stuff, like, what? <laughs> So I just say 300 a month on Tim Hortons. <clears throat> That's 3,600 a year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's a whole used car. That's a used car. <laughs> uh, it's a, it costs a used car the amount of Tim Hortons that I spent in a year. So you just got to think outside the box. You got to be honest. You got to be accountable. You got to really look over your finances. You got to realistically look at how much you make and you have to look at how much money you're spending out, like your bills, your rent, whatever, car payment, insurance if you have it. I have life insurance. I include that in it as well. The gas, lights, like, like whatever bills you pay, include internet, include all that, include all of your expenses, add it up. Is the amount of money you make less than your monthly expenses? If it is, then most likely you're late on a lot of your bills and you're paying a lot of your bills. You're, that's extra money when you're paying late fees. It might seem a, a little, like little, but late fees add up. If you have five different late fees for five different things that you pay late, at this point, you could be paying $100 a year in late fees <laughs> for being late. Imagine credit card debt. <laughs> I'm in it right now and it's not a bad credit card debt but it is like so I was in a bind and I was withdrawing money now when you withdraw money from a credit card it's not like a bank account so not only that you pay interest on on the money that you basically owe especially if you're late and I had like a late payment I had to pay a late payment charge you have to pay <laughs> you have to pay on the money that you took out as well like so it, it's now like I said all this stuff that I'm telling you is rocket science in the black community now I will say this though there's a lot of us that are becoming more conscious financially I do see more entrepreneurs I see a lot of people that I know personally that are doing great they're teaching their children they're saving saving up towards their college funds and you know saving up towards like whatever they need I love to see that in the black community where growing up when I look to the left and I look to the right I don't see business owners I don't see this I don't see success I don't see nothing but poverty I don't even see fathers in the homes I don't see nuclear families I see nothing but jail drug dealers and, and, and drug users and, and and a little flicker of hope that we have in our community are treated like crap all the all the kind people all the nice people all the man they treated the worst in the hood and don't tell me any different you can't tell me if you was one of those popular kids in school and you know you were a popular kid in school how did you treat the other children and that was me so you as the popular kid i hope that you understand that when you 
come to another child that don't have enough and you're talking to him crazy and you're and you're bullying him and you're treating him like this or y'all little girls that do the same thing you are sparking a demon in somebody a lot of these people are the drug dealers and the killers we see today they were a child that didn't have enough they got teased they said nah i ain't dealing with that anymore i'm about to sell drugs no this this is a real thing so i would just hope man like i said you see these rappers man a lot of these rappers are not doing what they used to do they got in the game and they still rap about this stuff but a lot of these rappers that you hear they they ain't, a lot of rappers ain't spinning the block or ain't doing this and that and that and this and those rappers that really about it that's really about it they dead did you hear me the rappers that's really really about it are dead that tells you something don't it the rappers that really bought it ain't even make it because if they really bought it, they ain't even gonna be about this Hollywood industry. So if you sign the dotted line on this Hollywood industry and you're tied with all of these record label people, especially big people, we got big names out here. I don't care about naming people, but man, you see the stuff that happened with Diddy and you know, just a lot of stuff that's coming to the surface. Holly weird, Hollywood's weird, you know what I'm saying? So you, you, you see many people that will sell their soul because they ain't had nothing or they were in a certain life and now you have it and now you're pushing the music or you're pushing the things that you left so you don't even you're not even in that life anymore but you're pushing it still and it affects the masses and like i said music and black culture does not just affect black people now it affects so many other people but this is something that i'm going to speak about in another video in another topic in another time when you look at your negative habits, when you look at all the things that, you know, take away from you, you're going to clearly see. And if you're somebody in the faith, the Holy Spirit will show you. It don't just have to be spending your money on anything sinful. It could be frivolous. Once again, like buying coffee. You could just buy a coffee maker and make the coffee yourself. It does take that little extra effort to make the coffee yourself. But I'm telling you, you're going to save thousands. The coffee maker, I, the coffee maker saved me thousands. <laughs> so <clears throat> but I truly hope that you took in something that I said in this video because there is a lot that I just threw in here and a lot of this or what I threw out here is foreign in the black community and too many parents in my in my generation haven't sat their children down and talked to them about this the parents that had money they spent their money so when the children grew up and had money, they learned how to spend their money. So being poor isn't just the big problem, but it's the poor mindset. I believe it's a part of a slave master mindset. So you work hard. It's a slave mindset. You work hard for those wages just to give it right back and have nothing to show for it. You're working for free, you're a slave. You're working, it's just, you're not being whipped anymore. The whip is your, your mindset. Your mindset beats you down into submission. And it messes your life up. You know, so, we have to get out of the slave mindset. If we're gonna work a job, even if it ain't that much, you make that little bit work. You make it work. Yeah, so before I go, I just wanna spit a quick testimony. <clears throat> um, so, after having relationship issues because I didn't have a job <laughs> with the next, um, I ended up um, getting a really good job opportunity with being a chemical operator. And now with that chemical operator, and it's cool as well because, okay, so my old job is actually, of course you can't see it because the camera's face this way and also, but my old job is literally right ahead of me right now. It's like literally right there. So this park that I'm at, I used to sit at a bench pretty far over on my breaks. And this is when I first started walking with the Most High. And I remember I used to come out here and I used to just talk with the Most High. I just thought of that just now talking about that job. And I think, man, I came a long way. I came a long way. Man, I look at myself, I came a long way. <laughs> but I remember working that job. It was a good job. I worked there about two years. Um, 
So I ended up getting a surprise call um, with my children being in foster care. So I had to get my children out of foster care and bring them into my household. Since then, in 2020, I had custody of my children. Now I tried to work and, and everything and work and take care of the children. It didn't work because the Most High was calling me to take care of my children. And I'm thinking like, man, how do I do this? Like, I'm used to doing it with somebody. And now I don't see my children for months. And then bam, they're radically thrown into my life out of nowhere. And back into my life out of nowhere. And I'm sitting here like, what do I do? And I remember just being grieved about it. But then I was moved, you know what? I'm gonna leave this job to take care of my children. And everybody thought I was crazy. Everybody thought I was this and that. It's like, how are you gonna do this? How are you gonna do that? I'm gonna tell you one thing. If my mindset was on money, I'm gonna tell you one thing. I, I would not be blessed today. I would still be at that job. I will most likely still be going through certain issues. I will have trouble with raising my children and taking care of my children. I will have so many issues with the most high. I feel like if I was, if I didn't yield to that call to take care of my children, my children would be little demon monsters right now, wreaking havoc. I would have had to just <laughs> send them out. Not to say it like that, but no, I would never do that with my children. I love them and Y'all put me in a position to raise them right, and you know, I got some well-behaved children. The result is because I had faith in God to leave my job and to leave all sort of financial security and trust in Him. To trust in God in that way? <laughs> Man. <laughs> you know, but ultimately, I'm going to tell this full testimony, but ultimately, I got let go. I put my two weeks notice in. They let me go literally the day after they let me go. They cut my two they, they cut my two weeks notice and they said we'll just pay you for the rest. You don't even gotta work anymore. The day after COVID shut the entire world down. I'm like, God, no, you didn't. And then unemployment rolled in. I had a good paying job. So Unemployment wasn't that bad, and on top of that, I was getting $600 a month on top of that. So I am making double the amount of money that I was making unemployed than I did when I was working. The reason why I wouldn't say double though is because I was working overtime in my job, and that's time and a half. But without the time and a half, I was making double. Now think about that. I had faith in God, and He gave me double after walking away from everything and saying, I'm going to do this. So, and this is why I got to tell my full testimony because you got to hear it. You got to hear those, those years that I went without work. You got to hear when the unemployment ran out. You got to hear when my rent went up $10,000. You got to hear when the failed business that I started and the debts that we had because we took a loan to get something for our business that we were t over 20,000 in debt. I, I had almost $40,000 in debt and what I owed in between credit cards, rent, all my bills and everything. Not one time have I been evicted. Uh, I, I lived in that house for two years, uh, two and a half years of not working. All my bills still some way getting paid because I had little things to help me in between and a rental assistance program that knocked off more than half of my rent with the beautiful job opportunity that has blessed me to be able to do a lot of things that I'm able to do today and to have the freedom that I have today. And hold on, let me fix this, man, because it's, it's getting blurry and then But because I have faith in the Most High, He's blessed me way more than if I wouldn't have taken that leap. And this is the part in trusting in the Most High. And it's important to trust the Most High in your finances more than anything and everything. You have to trust the Most High with your finances. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit in your finances. Just get in the prayer, open your word, get in the prayer and just look Excuse me. And then just get into the presence of the Most High with your bank statements. Talk to the Most High about your, your spending. Talk to the Most High. Repent to the Most High for 
the wrong that you've done as well because we spend our money on wrong things as well you know so and i'm telling you man when you trust him and you honor him in that he will honor you in that as well when you work principle being a good steward and taking care of what you have he will bless you with more but if you can't take care of the little that he gives you how can he bless you with more that's not just money that's in principle with everything in your life you hear me no man be blessed by that but ultimately you know i want to conclude this video I've, I've been up here 36 minutes i'm skinny and sitting down on a wooden bench you know so i got no meat under here so i am suffering right now <laughs> I'm not suffering for righteousness sake, I am suffering, I guess so, I guess this could be a blessing, but yeah man, and I'm not trying to come to you and talk to you like a, like I said, a financial advisor, I would suggest you get a financial advisor if you are somebody that has money, now I'm not somebody to give money advice, this is to heal from growing up poor, but there's been people that's been poor that come into money that makes poor decisions. So this is for you as well. But I'm not coming here to tell you what you should do. I'm not here to counsel you because like I said, there's financial counsel and financial advisors. And if you have money to get a financial consultant to help you with your books, your businesses, your, your taxes, or just finances or spending habits or budgeting or whatever. And if that's what you need and you have the funds to do it, Spend that money, that's an investment, and I best believe, I'm telling you, even if the consultant, even if it's a one hour consulting call, write down a bunch of questions that you wanna ask that consultant. Like write down a bunch of questions, get a call for like an hour, or even two hours if you need to, or get two separate calls for one hour. You get one call for an hour, and you, and you get advice on those questions that you have, then you write down the answers, you go back into it, and, you exercise those things and from there you will have more questions so if you need a second one or or if you just need a permanent financial advisor then just hire somebody to work for you and and to work with them as and be their client and trust and believe man they gonna deliver for you because there's people out here don't be deceived by them as well by the way you know also um man just do your best don't beat yourself up from things that you've done in the past. Don't even beat yourself up from anything you've done today. But just look at yourself clearly. Look at your finances clearly. Look at your life clearly. Look and think about it. Like, how did I grow up? What was my upbringing? And then when you think about your upbringing, think about your money right now and, and try to pinpoint where you got it from. And most likely, you either learned it from your parents or you were never taught. And that's why you're bad with money, even if you have a good opportunity, job, or businesses. You know, so... But ultimately, I truly hope that, you know, we all can grow in healing on our journey together. Like I said, I had other healing talks um, already prior, and I believe those are important topics. Before I moved on, you know, this is something that I'm exercising. When you look at, when you look at your debts, when you look at what you owe people, when you look at uh, your bills, when you look at how behind you are, your past due balances, <laughs> when you're looking at, uh, and, and just being disorganized and not having discipline and not really getting to it, man. I'm telling you, I'm not trying to tell you this because I've been in this, this man. No, I'm telling you from the experience of being on the other side. And I'm not all the way there now, but I'm working towards it. And those that know me, they seen it. But those that might not know me too much, this is how you're first seeing me. So this is the first impression. No, I grew up poor. And when I say I grew up poor, I was the poorest of the poor people. So when I look to the right, when I look to the left, I was the poorest. But because of the household that we had, I didn't feel poor. So this is what I want to tell you as well, encourage you on. I said this earlier, being poor or being broke is a mindset. Being poor can be a mindset as well. When you have a rich mindset, even, imp even impoverished, you have the potential to go beyond. But also, you can teach your children morals. You can teach your children what's right. If you are a parent and you are morally going after whatever for money, your children are gonna do the same thing. 
But if you're somebody that don't have money or don't have much money because you're doing the best that you could, most likely you probably are good with money. You just don't have enough and you're doing your best. You probably have self-discipline. That's why you're able to pay all the bills and make sure everybody in the house are eating. Even though you don't have enough, you still have enough to get everything that you need because you are doing the best that you can with what you have. Trust in the most high and don't limit him. But also, you can't be lazy or you can't just be have a settling mindset. You know, you have to work towards something better. You know, I remember growing up on the block. There was, there was children that wanted to grow up and sell drugs. Like that was their dream. It was people that wanted to grow up and be like the people around. I don't know. I remember seeing people, I never, I didn't want to be like nobody. I didn't want to be like nobody. <laughs> I wanted to be me. But when I grew up, I found some people that could be mentors. I found some people that I would want to pattern myself after. Jesus Christ is the number one person. Jesus Christ. Christ. Yahushua HaMashiach. Christ. That is the number one person that I would want to emulate myself and be like. And let me tell you, even if you're walking in Christ's principles in your businesses, I'm telling you, you are going to be wealthy. If it's his will. <laughs> but, you know, be blessed by this though. I ain't going to promote nothing right now. Um, everything's in the description. But I just hope that you are blessed. Um, I truly hope that I said something that sparked something in you. And even some things that I was saying as I was saying it sparked something in me to make me want to go back in my, my finances, make me want to go back to not really my bank statements, but also my credit card statements that I avoided. <laughs> and um, yeah, make something happen, man. And really just see where things are, see where things are going. And if I could see that and if I could pinpoint it by the Holy Spirit, I could be led. I could be led, man, into making better decisions. So I hope that you are led by the Holy Spirit, not just in finances, but in your life. I know this is a very, very long video, but I'm doing videos weekly, so this is enough to chew up. And once again, man, it's time for us to get to it. It's time for us to work. It's time for us to grind. It's time for us to stop procrastinating. It's time for us to have self-discipline. It's time for us to have discipline. It's time for us to live right. It's time for us to eat right. It's time for us to treat our bodies right. It's time for us to, to treat our loved ones right. It's time for us to, <laughs> man, it's time for us to truly walk this walk, you know, so. And really give honor to the most high. So I hope you've been blessed. And Yahushua name, may he bless you, be blessed, and once again, be blessed, and be better with your money. Whoop, whoop.